All right, welcome back to Crunch Time. We're going to move you into the zone. We've been trying to get this guy on for a while now, and uh, he is a, a friend of George's. And, George, you really, you really, uh, this is Dr. Bill Harrison, and, and you swear by this guy. And, and, and Bill is uh, known to put, got, to put guys in the zone. It's called slowthegamedown.com. He's got it all organized and ready to go. And, uh, Dr. Bill, welcome. Yeah, good morning. How are you? We are doing hey, terrific. Hey, Doc, listen to this. I P I S S I S S I S S I M. You finally got it, George. How's that? Straight. You got it. But I'm not jumping up and down on the trampoline with a strobe light on and you throwing tennis balls at me. So what were we doing that for? I never could figure it out. Well, you know, George, I never told you. <laughs> <laughs> I made you do it. It was well, an I never experiment told you why. back then. You know, uh, the Royals owner, Mr. Kaufman, said this guy is a heck of a physical specimen, but he's a beach boy from Southern California. We don't think he can concentrate. So we, we wanted to test you for Mr. Kaufman to prove that you could concentrate. So see, you, you Did want, I pass the test? You passed the test with incredible uh, uh, ability. <laughs> we, we are talking Dr. Bill Harrison. Explain exactly what that was you put George through. And people are going to go, they really didn't do that. Go ahead. <laughs> well, it was myself, Frank Hortensio, and Jim Wolford. That's true. We're then the three guinea pigs. Others. The That's first three true. guys you and Dr. Lee worked with. Is that correct? How, how many did you say? I said it was uh, it was Frank Hortensio, That's Jim right. Wolford, and myself. And I think we were the first three the Royals sent to you in Absolutely. 1971. We, we had actually have seen Ed Kirkpatrick just prior to that, uh, but it was during the season. And then uh, it was yourselves. And then we went into Kansas City for a couple weeks and uh, saw about 15, 20 players, which included uh, Lou Pinella, of course, and uh, you know a variety of guys that are still involved in the game. But anyway, what it was about was just the, uh, the understanding that we had is that you know there are people with great eyes, but when they drive down the highway, they don't always use them and oftentimes wake up. Now, I know you do this today, George. You wake up and say, how in the heck did I get here? I missed my turn off. Uh, didn't even see it. Or, you know, kids in school will read, or adults as well will read to the bottom of a page. And not understand one thing they read. And nothing registered. So what we know is that even though you might be able to read the bottom of the chart, uh, when that ball gets moving and when you get moving and all kind of action taking place, some people go blind. We wanted to make sure you didn't go blind. <laughs> so so you had George do what exactly on, on next well, part? And I know it's advanced since that time, but, yeah. but just to, well, to go know, back as, to the beginning. As an aside, now George may remember, he spent about two and a half days with us. So we did a lot of things, but probably the most memorable is we want to involve, the, the whole idea was to involve all the sensory systems, the mind, the body, uh, all the coordination skills, and get them uh, functioning at once. So we had George on a trampoline. And you can envision George on a trampoline, of course, can't you? <laughs> he was bouncing up and down with his legs going out and in or in various uh, type of movements, uh, forward and backward and crossing. And But they all had a, a follow-up pattern. His hands were actually moving in circles. And, uh, you know, the, the, we were uh, thinking that he, I'm just sort of kidding here, but we wanted to make sure he didn't have the iron, iron hand syndrome with his glove hand. You know, if we put him at third base with an iron hand, it wasn't going to be too good. So we wanted to make sure his hands were relaxed while he did all these things. And then um, he was bombarded with, like he mentioned, tennis balls or visual things that he had to track and catch and so forth, but also to see if he could think. Now, a lot of people can think pretty well sitting in an easy chair. I know I can, but when we get on our feet, it's very difficult to do. Well, George uh, proved uh, by a shadow of doubt he could, he could think when he was in space. You know, I, I think he was the original spaceman, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Instead of Bill Lee, right? <laughs> yeah, we are talking with uh, Dr. Bill Harrison. Uh, he is a renowned sports performance specialist. His website is slowthegamedown.com. He has worked with, are you ready, George Brett, Jason Giambi, Sean Green, Greg Maddox, Jim Colbert, Billy Casper, the Miller family, Reggie, Cheryl, and Daryl, Lisa Fernandez, who is the softball pitcher, Jenny Finch, the softball pitcher, and many, many other people as well. Talk to us about how you have refined this and what you're talking about when you call it the zone. Yeah, well, you know, basically, uh, I'll, I'll answer two questions there. One is that uh, what we really believe, and this is a philosophy that we didn't express so well back when I knew George and he was playing, but we really learned this over time, is that if, if an athlete really controls their eyes and really gets tuned into what they see, they literally will slow the action down. They'll slow the ball down. And when the action slows down and the ball gets bigger and clearer, and George used to talk about seeing beach balls all the time, you probably remember, and uh, when that happens... You're not aware of your body, you don't think, and all of a sudden just everything works after, as a result of a lot of practice and training and so forth. 
And uh, so our emphasis is in this age of tremendous emphasis on the mechanics of every sport because videotape makes everybody an expert, uh, or at least they think they are. But uh, as one gets more focused on mechanics and they start thinking about where their feet are and their nose and their chest to the grindstone or whatever it may be, um, they really stop seeing and stop slowing the ball down. So that's just, it's, just another, it's just another kind of spoke in the wheel to get back to slowing the game down. And, uh, you know, it seems like great athletes are able to do that naturally. Others were able to help them do it a little more often. Now, not everybody can come see you, obviously. Right. Um, how can they get in? How, how can they, you know, get their athletes involved in this? Whether it's a, well, a a father trying to get his son, or a mom trying to get his daughter, or vice versa, or whatever, or a high school coach. I know Bill Snyder, the head football coach at Kansas State University, swears by it, and that that's a pretty good endorsement, along with George. I'll guarantee you that. That's that, that's great of Coach Snyder. It's been fun working with some of his players, and uh, no doubt they were able to do this pretty much the same thing that George did in baseball. As a matter of fact, this year we've worked with the uh, Wichita State baseball team. So we've got some followers over there in Wichita as well. But um, one reason we developed our website is we've been focused the last few years on de- developing training products that the masses could use. It doesn't require individual training or individual work. And um, uh, some of the products are software-oriented, so they're online where one can go on and uh, really work on their concentration skills. And we have players that do it for, before every game. They'll uh, uh, different sports in different uh, situations. They'll do it for five or ten minutes before they leave their hotel room or even in the ballpark sometimes. And then we've got other products that train depth perception and tracking. And it all sort of generally relates to concentration skills. So as they train the eyes, it seems like they feel like they have better concentration. And when they have better concentration, they have better ability to slow the game down. Well, one of the things, Doc, that I remember was the, the, the things that I would pull apart and try to keep them together as right. long as I could. Mm-hmm. That was for, for depth perception, correct? That's, that's right, and, and, and the muscles of your eyes for tracking, which you were exceptionally good. And, and, and another one I remember was the cow. You'd look at the picture of the cow. Right. And, 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 <laughs> and uh, you know, you'd look at this thing, and, and you, it was like an ink blot, yeah. and, and you wouldn't know what it was. And then he said, okay, now, do you see an animal by any chance? And you'd go, No. Is yeah. it maybe a cow? <laughs> no. And then all of a sudden, you would look for a cow, and you could see it, it was a. It, and then you look at it every time you look you at look it, you at go, different ways, "It's a cow." Yeah. Right. It's a cow. You look at it, and there's the cow right there. Well, George, but it was got... an ink blot type thing. But right. the, but Doc, I remember three words that were I think very key to my success: focus, centering, and visualization. Right. Those are the three things that I think I learned from you more than anything: how to focus. Under tight situations, pressure situations, how to center on the ball as it's coming to you and visualizing success. Mm-hmm. And not only visualizing success, but actually you visualize it to a point where you, you get goosebumps. And you right. relive that moment time after time after time. And as a result of that, it gets all the negative thoughts because you only visualize success. You never visualize failure. You correct the problem right when it happens. You visualize success, and all of a sudden, you, you're in that good frame of mind where your mind's working with your eyes. Is that correct? You're boy, the, it, it said by the master. I don't know if there's anyone that was ever able to do it like you, George. And, you know, back to that cow, I just want to mention, what you were also exceptionally good was using that principle in terms of your early recognition and identification of a pitch. You, Unlike most hitters, you knew early if that pitch was in your keyhole, and if so, you were going to deliver uh, a rocket, and if not, you took those pitches. I mean, you took those principles and, uh, I mean, made me proud, to say the least, because uh, I don't know if you needed to be explained through the cow or anything else. It might have been just that would have happened anyway. But you sure were the perfect example. Although I have to admit, George, all these years and working with players, I think I finally found one that might have ended up almost a little better at it than you. Who's that? Well, um, in 1986, I met a young man who'd come out of A-ball, a bit like you. He had hit about uh, 260 in A-ball. Right. He had, he had good genes, but after evaluating his skills and his ability to focus and center and visualize and his recognition skills and so forth, I, I said to his general manager, I said, this guy can be as good as he wants to be. I don't know what that is. And um, he was an A-ball player, and he said, I'll keep an eye on him. Well, this was in February. General manager called him up to the big leagues in May, uh, from he went from A to Triple A and then on up in the major leagues, and he's still doing a pretty good job. That's Barry, Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds. Oh, okay, yeah. But you know, Barry you, has used your principles 
I say your principles because you helped us, you know, make certain that these things really applied in Major League Baseball. We thought they did, but we couldn't. You know, you you didn't know it. You were the laboratory rat. Right, I was the rat. <laughs> but the one thing Barry did that I didn't do was spend about ten hours a day in a gym lifting weights. That's true. You never told me to do that, or else I would have. <laughs> you said don't lift weights; it'll make you too tight, and then you won't be fluid, and you won't be yeah. athletic. You'll be too muscle bound. Hey, so, hey. George, just do your eye exercises every day, and maybe jog around the block once or twice, and then go to spring training, and you'll be fine. Hey, well, but you hey I think you did okay. Okay, yeah. I thought I think you did just fine. And, and you know, when you think about the three principles that George really took out of this: focus, um, and then center, and then have your visual visualization. Vi- visualization. I can't even say it. Let I alone couldn't do say it. it. Took me about um, three years to say that word too. You can translate all that, like George. You probably translate that to golf. I mean, you probably well, take I it try over to golf. Time, I try, but I have too many negative thoughts in my mind at golf. <laughs> too many negative thoughts. I remember that last shank or that last chili dip or the last three putt. Or the last slice out of bounds, but Doc, but Doc, you're doing this for not only athlete athletes, but you're doing it for corporate America now, right? That's true. We're even getting into some of the uh, law enforcement and and people with uh, some other applications there, because you know, bottom line is everyone has the same problem. This, among other things, going into a situation, not knowing what's going to happen, and visual recognition is a big part of it. There's mistakes made, you know, in our law enforcement every day by thinking they see a gun and it's actually a banana in, a, in someone's hand. So it's really picking up that slider right out of the hand. Yeah, so it, it so you, you do it there. Now, now, translate to golf. I know Jim Colbert's worked with you. Yes. Is, is there anything different in that in, in that area for golfers? Well, obviously, the trouble with George is that ball sitting on the ground not moving. And, you, uh, and it gives you too much time to think. <laughs> and it's true. So a lot of it is keeping the mind clear. And George can do that, and, and George plays the game of golf for fun and laughs. Not some, not you know, it's not where he gets his paycheck, right? So when you get the paycheck, you get a little more serious. Uh, although maybe you're doing that now, George. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't see him laugh a whole lot in a golf course. Though. <laughs> but um, the uh, the interesting thing about it is the principles that we've worked with. What's, what George, what uh, Jim Colbert has explained is that they help him the most when he's under pressure, when he's really under the gun, got a chance to win. And that's when he was able to just sort of slow down and literally start seeing the ball roll into the hole, uh, see the ball real clearly down the fairway, and just sort of let it happen. It's not easy in golf, and, and Jim Colbert would be the first thing one to tell you. But as you improve, uh, you start, uh, you know, uh, uh, part of the improvement is trust. As George knows, he got to the point in baseball that he knew that he was prepared. He, he relaxed, cleared his mind and just trusted his instincts based on seeing the ball well. And it's the same kind of principle in golf, learning the mechanism to be able to do that. You know, Doc, I watched the Masters. Did you watch the Masters this year? I saw parts of it. Okay, Phil Mickelson had the lead going into the last day. Ernie Els makes that big push. Eagles 14, 15, whatever it was. And then all of a sudden, Mickelson's three back. Mm -hmm. And and, and, and he he birdies uh, 12, and he had a smile on his face. And as soon as I saw him smile under all that pressure... I thought good things were going to happen because he he wasn't grinding, you know. He wasn't really going out there grinding. He was still having fun. And I told I told D Brown this year in spring training, and correct me if I'm wrong. When you smile, it relaxes your body. Absolutely. And and D Brown gets in the batter's box every day, even in batting practice, and he's got this frown on his face where he's, his whole body's so tense. And I told him one time, I said, D, let me tell you something. You're too tense up here. You got to relax. Smile. I go up there and smile during this round of BP, and yeah, he hit the ball hard a couple times, and and I said, "Now how'd that feel?" And he said, "Well, I felt a lot more fluid." Mm-hmm. Well, he said, "But I can't smile in a game," and I said, "Why can't you?" Joe Randa does that. Why day. can't you <laughs> smile in the game? He said, "The pitcher will stick one in my ear." I said, "No, we won't. Go up there and just smile." Sure enough, he pinched it that day in spring training, and we were in the third base dugout, so I could see his face, man, and he looked like. King Kong trying to <laughs> climb the building. He was so tense. Yeah. And, 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 you know, we, we talk about the tenseness in, in your hands, but you can be tense in your eyes, too. And, oh, and absolutely. I, and I think that's one of Dee Brown's biggest problems. He gets too tense in his face and his neck, and all of a sudden, it, you know, he thinks his hands are nice and relaxed, yeah. but they're not. It's just the opposite. You've got to relax your eyes. Right. It, it, it affects your, your eyes and affects your mind, and it affects the tracking skills. So no doubt the tension is, is the underlying, you know, factor that will disrupt the skills that should be there. So smile, right? Exactly. Smile, though your heart is big. And, Doc, I think about you every morning I get up, I put on those glasses oh you gosh. gave me. Every time I put those glasses on about 6.30 in the morning to go sit down and read the paper, I think of you, Doc. 
<laughs> he's the one when I was what, 44 years old. He yeah. said, George, I think, uh, you know, because he was my first. I'd never been to an optometrist yeah. before. And I went there and he said, oh, you got great vision. No problem. Now we just got to get your eyes to work with the rest of your body. Yeah. And so he came to spring training. He came to spring training for years and years and years, tested everybody on the team's eyes. And sure enough, I was retired. And I said, I'm going to go get my eyes checked. You know, <laughs> the papers got looking a little blurry in the morning. <laughs> so I go in and check my eyes. And he says, George, I got some bad news. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write a prescription for you to get some glasses. <laughs> <laughs> He's starting to catch up to the rest of us, Doctor Bill. There's yeah, no know, doubt about that. That makes I'm, me that makes me feel better. I'm going to think. <laughs> I'm thinking about sending George a, um, a subscription to a big print magazine. For print. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> big print sports. I've only lost one pair. Right? I still have one pair. I got to go get my eyes checked again and get a new prescription. <laughs> All right, Doctor Bill Harrison, slowthegamedown.com. That's what it is. If you want to tune in and get your athletes tuned up. Right there. Dr. Bill, we appreciate running you down, and thanks what for joining us today. Thank you. Enjoyed both of you. Thank you, you. You bet. Thanks. Good talking to you, Doc. Yeah, thanks, it was George. great talking to him. Coming up next, Dennis Dodd. Don't go anywhere. We're going to talk about a little bit about the BCS. They've changed their formula around and about the latest from the University of Colorado next on Crunch Time.